Hi everyone, it's Narelle here from Cricket Explore Maker and More Facebook group. A few updates ago in Design Space, the auto wrap feature was added to the text option. Now, after some feedback from their users, they removed the feature while they went and did some tweaking to it. Well, as from the update that has commenced rolling out today, the auto wrap feature is back and I'm going to go through now and show you how it works along with some other changes to the bounding box that goes around the text. Now these changes are for the desktop app for Windows and Mac computers which includes laptops and the iOS app for iPhones and iPads. It will be coming to the Android app but hopefully in the next couple of months. So let's first look at how this works in the desktop app. So here I am at my canvas and I'm going to click the text icon. When I do that, you'll see the text placeholder appear on the canvas. And as soon as you see that, that means that you're in edit mode. Now you don't click anywhere on your canvas. All you need to do now is just go to your keyboard and start typing. And you can see that the placeholder text has been overwritten with the text that I typed. Now this text box has no controls when you're in edit mode, so you're not seeing any handles or icons. And when you click anywhere on the canvas, it will take you out of edit mode. And you'll see a message appear at the top of your screen that says to edit, double click the text. Now this message will stay there for approximately 10 seconds and it will only appear three times. When you're going out of edit mode after that third time, that message will no longer appear. Now you can also edit your text by going to the text box itself and right clicking and then select edit text from that menu. So I'm going to double click my text, which takes me back into edit mode. And if I start typing at this point, it will totally replace all of the text that's in that text box. But I just want to go and fix up my little typo here because I've missed out the letter R. So I'm just going to move my um, mouse in between that E and the A. I'm going to click in there and that gives me my cursor, which shows where my text is now going to be inserted and I'll just type in the letter R and it inserts that for me. So again, I'll click onto the canvas and that takes me out of edit mode. And now you can see that I've got these different handles to what you're actually used to. You'll see that there's four square handles on each of the corners and then you've got four rectangular handles on the left, right, top and bottom. You'll also maybe notice that there's no rotate icon, there's no lock icon and there's no delete icon. So now to rotate your text, you simply hover your mouse outside any of those four corner handles and you'll see this rounded or curved double-sided arrow. And you can use any of those to rotate your text. So I'm just going to click down there and drag that around and I can rotate my text. Now you can also rotate your text by using the rotate menu at the top here by using those up and down arrows or if you know the degree of rotation that you want, you can type that into the input box here and press enter. To lock or unlock the proportions of your text box, you can click the lock that's at the top of your screen between the width and height boxes. And once you've done that, you can use any of the four corner handles to change the size of your text non-proportionally. And when you do that, you'll notice that the top 
bottom left and right handles don't appear. And to get those back, all you need to do is go back to the top and click on that lock icon again. To delete a text box, you can use the delete option that's at the top of the layers panel here, or you can simply press the delete key on your keyboard. The four corner handles on your text box are for scaling your text. So you click and drag any of those corner handles to make the point size of your text bigger or smaller. Now if you make your text too small, you'll notice that some of those handles are going to disappear. And that's simply because it's just not possible for all of those handles to show in such a small area. So to get those back, you can do two things. You can either resize that text again, or while that's very small, you can change the zoom on your canvas here and those handles will reappear. Now to change the size of the text box without changing the size of the actual text, you're going to use the left and right arrows. And when you use those handles, your text will be put into wrap mode and you'll see that your text will wrap to fit inside the size of your text box. When you do that, you'll see a message at the top of your screen that says your text will now wrap. To switch to inline text, click alignment. And like the previous message that you saw when you were getting out of edit mode, this one will also only appear three times for 10 seconds each time. And after that, you won't see that message again. Now to get your text back to one single line, you have a couple of options. First, you can drag the left and right handles out until you have one long line of text again. Or you can go up to the alignment menu here and select wrap off. Now I'm going to go and turn wrap back on and I can do that two ways. I can go to the alignment menu and select wrap on or I can just take my text, grab one of the left or right handles and move that back in and it will again start to wrap. Now if I want to add some more text to this, I can do that and it will keep wrapping my text. So I'm going to double click in here after the E. So the first time I double clicked it selected all of my text. I then clicked again where I wanted my text to be inserted and then I will just continue to type. And you can see that it automatically wrapped that text. So that covers the changes to wrap text and the handles on the bounding box. But I just wanted to show you that when you're using shapes and images, you're also going to see that the handles have changed. So I'm just going to select one of these images here and you can see that the four corner handles here have also changed to the same as that you would see on your text and you'll use those handles to grow and shrink your shape. You'll also hover around the outside of the four corners and you'll find the rotate arrow and you can rotate your shape that way. You can also rotate up here by using the up and down arrows or putting in a degree of rotation. To lock the dimensions or lock the proportions of that shape, you do that in the same way as you do with text. You'll click on that lock icon there and it's now unlocked and when I change the size it's non-proportionally and then just lock that again. I just go back up here and click the lock icon. To delete that star, all I need to do is go over to the layers panel and I can click the delete icon there or again, I can press the delete icon on my keyboard. So that covers the changes in the desktop app. Now I'm going to go to my iPad and we'll cover the changes there. So here I am in the iOS app and I'm going to take you through the changes to text and to the bounding box. 
I'm going to tap the text icon at the bottom of the canvas and the first change you'll see and one that I'm very happy about is that the text box opens straight into edit mode without having to select a font first. So the placeholder text appears and the keyboard pops up and now I'm ready to type my text. Now you'll see that there's no handles around the bounding box when you're in edit mode. And when you finish typing your text, there's two ways to get out of edit mode. The first way is to just simply tap anywhere else on the canvas. And the other way is to click the green done option at the top right of the keyboard. When you do that, the keyboard closes the handles will appear around your text and the edit menu will open. You'll also see a message at the bottom of the screen that says to edit, double tap text. Like the desktop app, this message will only appear three times. At this point, you can click the font picker above where it says font name and you can select a different font if you wish. The handles that you see around the text are the same as those that you see on the desktop app with the exception of the rotate handle and you'll see the rotate handle just below the text. Use that handle by tapping and dragging to rotate your text. You can also rotate your text from the rotate option here in the edit menu. So you can click on that then press the plus or minus keys or you can put in an actual rotation amount and it will change that for you that way. To delete your text in the actions menu you can see deletes now lit up and I can press that delete button and it will be deleted. To unlock the proportions so that you can skew your text Tap on the lock icon that's between the width and the height boxes in the edit menu. The four corner handles are used to scale your text and change the size of the font. So I'm going to click and drag one of those and you can see that my text is growing and so is the text box. Now I unlock those proportions down here which is why my text is being skewed. So I'm going to select undo to go back to that. I'm going to go back to the edit menu there. I'm going to lock those again and this time when I resize using any of those four corner boxes it's going to stay in proportion. Now the handles at the top, bottom, left and right are used to add space around your text and they'll turn text wrap on. In the first three times you use those handles, you'll see a message pop up that says your text will now wrap to switch to inline text, tap alignment. Now if I tap the alignment menu now, you'll see that wrap text is turned on. If you want to go back to inline text where it will continue to grow to the right, you can turn that wrap text toggle off and your text will go back to one single line. Now if you want to manually put your line breaks in as you have always done, you can do that by tapping the enter key on the keyboard. Now the corner handles on shapes and images have also been updated just like they have been in the desktop app. So if you go to shapes and select any of the shapes there, when you tap on that you'll see those four corner handles that you use to change the height and width of your, of your shape. And again, if you want to rotate, you use the rotate button there or the rotate option in the edit menu. 
to unlock the proportions. Again, go to the Edit menu and click the lock that's between the width and the height box. And then when you resize that using those handles, you're going to skew that shape at the same time. To delete, again, go to the Actions menu and you'll see Delete has been lit up there on the left-hand side of that menu. So that's the changes in the iOS app. As always, if you have any feedback regarding this app, you should go back to the main menu and tap on the help and feedback option and then select send feedback. And then you can let them know about any bugs that you find. There are a few little funny things happening here still that they are working on. Um, for example, when I've noticed when I double tap my text to try and um, put more letters in or edit my text, my cursor, it doesn't necessarily sit at the right position. So it's, it's a little bit difficult to know where it is actually going to insert. Um, so that's just one of the things that I found. So as I said, make sure you send feedback for any bugs that you find. Otherwise, these things just won't get fixed. Um, so hopefully that has helped with the changes that are being released today. And um, by all means, if you have uh, any questions and you want any, any more help, please don't hesitate to ask me in my Facebook group and I will be more than happy to help. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.